Welcome to your sixth Jedi tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be going over how to do texturing. Now, the first thing we have to do is we have to get the texture. Um, so, we go to Nihi. You can download any of these lessons. You can even download the Jago one. If you're doing the Jago one, um, you have to open it in WinRAR. WinRAR, uh, we're going to go up one rookery. This is just an open um, in WinRAR. You go to data, you can just extract this image to uh, your clips folder. What I did, um, for simplicity's sake, is I pasted, I created a folder in a directory called data, and then I just put it in there. So, I'm assuming you know how to do that. If you don't, uh, Google it, because I have a lot to go over in this tutorial. So, first thing we're going to do, we're going to go inside of our display method, and we're going to delete it. Oh no, all of our work. Well, actually, we don't need to delete everything. Uh, just pretty much that. We can keep the DL2 because that's always the first line and we can keep these two because we need to load it. We should probably also add geo dot flush geo gl flush apologies uh, dang it oh gl flush there we go okay so now what we need to do is we need to go to Nihi um, copy their quad um, Pretty much. So we're, what we're gonna do? Wait, before we do that, um, we're gonna add some methods after load identity. Sorry, forgot we deleted everything. We're gonna do GL translate. I'm doing a new translation, so I didn't delete it. I want to make sure that your translation. Oh wait, translate on. Yeah, zero. Now we're just centering it on the screen because we're only going to have one view. Now we're going to add gl dot rotate. Rotate f. Angle is going to be x rotation. And for x, we're going to have 1.0, 0, 0.0. 0. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this two other times. We're going to do one for X, one for Y, and one for Z. What we're doing is we're just specifying, um, in the previous tutorial we only rotated on one axis, now we're going to rotate on all three. So what we need to do then is we need to set this value to zero because this is Y. Put a one there and put a one here and change this to zero. So as you can see, it just forms with um, basic. I know you're giving me errors, we haven't declared variable yet. So what we're going to do down here is we're going to do x root plus equals, and then we can give a value. I'm just going to give it a value of f.3, f y root plus equals 0.2f, sounds good, and then z plus equals Okay, so now we have everything pretty much done. Um, now we can go in there, and then you can go to the go to his website, copy that, because it's like I said, it's a lot easier just to copy and paste it. Um, if you understand how points are placed, I sh I'm assuming you watched the first tutorials, you should have a really good understanding of why this works. So I just copied and pasted it. I also ran through my filter. So now we have. The only thing different from this cube and the other cube is we have GL text coordinates. So we have texture cores, coordinates corresponding to vector coordinates. That is important. Now, there is one extra line we have to add, and that's going to be GL dot GL find texture. So, and then we're just going to do texture, and then this is going to be GL2 dot GL underscore texture underscore we're using a two-dimensional texture then we're gonna keep the variable texture okay so like I said important thing to get out of this is the only thing we really changed from this tutorial in the previous cube is we've added a uh, call the gel bind texture we're also rotating on the X Y and Z axis and we've added um, 
GL texture coordinates corresponding to every vector coordinate. So now we need to get rid of these parameters that aren't used. Um, this is the rotate the quad and the rotate the triangle. Now we need to add X rotation, comma Y rotation, and Z rotation. There we go. That gets rid of one error. And then we're going to have. You're like, wait, how can a texture be an int? Well, I'm actually going to show you that one. So as you can see, it loads the GL texture, which is just an integer, and that gets rid of all, gets rid of, all of our errors. And that is all of our imports we need. OK. So now let's go to actually getting the file. We're going to go to our init method. Right underneath uh, the GL hint is going to be our code for texturing. Now, this is where um, it differs from C++, Java, and all that is the file input and output. I'm assuming you know how to do file and input output in Java using try catch exceptions. So let's begin. First thing you got to do is we got to enable the texture. GL dot GL enable. And then it's going to be GL2 dot GL texture. GL underscore texture underscore 2D. As you can see, we use this one for the texture um, above. That's why we have to enable it. So actually, the init is, remember, the init is called before display. So technically, this is being called before that, but yeah. Anyways, so we're going to do a try and catch loop. Now, um, because we're doing input output, it's, it's an I.O. exception. You should know that by now. Input output throws an I.O. exception. And this is just going to be E. Print stack trace. I'm not doing uh, error handling. If I wanted to, I could do a little window because the file can't be found. Okay. File I am equals new file. Now, wherever you put the image is what's going to be in here. Remember the type. Um, so that for me, it's going to be data slash e key capital E dot PNG. Now you got to remember to specify the file type, otherwise you get the file can't be found exception. Now I'm going to import file. Now you're getting an error because the I.O. exception, we're not actually throwing an I.O. exception yet, but we will in this line. Texture T equals texture I.O. dot new. Texture I am comma true. Okay, this is um, then other tutorials, they had me like doing all this fancy stuff. Uh, I spelled this wrong. E X texture and import texture. They have you doing all this fancy stuff like it. Like I said, um, I don't like doing it that way. I like simple, simple yet effective. You want the least amount of code that does the same thing. Now they they have you converting it. They have you stuff. Java can do this for you if you let it. Java has a bunch of pre-made methods. So you don't need to reinvent the wheel if the wheel's already been invented, so to speak. So now I'm going to draw it and hopefully... Oh wow, it worked. Now other tutorials have you creating a bunch of methods that, uh, like I said, takes the image, gives assigns it uh, vector points, and creates a matrix and all that this stuff. I don't like doing that. I like calling uh, pre-made methods and just binding the texture that way. Because Java has methods that does that automatically, so when I, every time I see a tutorial that does it, I'm like, okay. Not necessarily needed. It, well, I guess from another perspective, once we get to 3D objects, you will have to kind of assign where the image file goes on the image, but honestly, if you're going to do that, it's quicker to um, just create an OBJ or wavefront object importer and just uh, that does it for universal. So, anyways, this has been the sixth tutorial. I forgot to change the number. In the seventh tutorial, we'll, we will be going over uh, texture filters and lighting keyboard control.
and keyboard controlled stuff. Really interesting. So stay tuned and bear with it. We're actually starting to get to more of the fun stuff. My favorite is actually blending because you can do really cool stuff. So anyways, um, keep programming.